Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for frame rate is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Framerate is brought to you by MailRoute.info. MailRoute is a secure hosted service that provides enterprise-grade virus and spam filtering to companies of any size. Try it right now absolutely free at MailRoute.info. Me some Boba Fett in the Muni station. <laughs> I love the chat room is so fast. The moment he pops up, they shout Polka Fett. I loved it. And uh, if you didn't recognize it, one of the uh, tracks from Ocarina of Time, Legend of Zelda. Yes, indeed it is, sir. How have you been, Mr. Tomas Maritz? I have been well. How have you been? I probably shouldn't have let off with that question, thinking that you would probably kick it back to me. My my daughters had like eight days of 104 degree fever, and I come home and I'm like, "Well, I'll take some Tamiflu, so I won't have the." Uh, should have taken I, interferon. I should have been taking interferon or Cipro or any of them. Just give me a cocktail of one of everything. Thank I you. am so sorry to hear that. Uh, children, uh, God love them, are like little petri dishes, and sure. they will get you sick every time. Oh my gosh, it's like that's what they live for. Yeah. You realize. <laughs> they get over there, they're like, I have so many. Uh, did you ever read The Diamond Age by Neil Stevenson? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. where, where it's like they use disease as a, as a way to, to compute a massively parallel equation. That's what kids are doing. Yeah. When they're like, let me exchange my face fluids with yours. They're awesome. Merely a distributed computing system. That's right. Yeah. Well, then I'd like to think I'm doing my part to help uh, solve some kind of master equation of the world. I think we have some very good stories today on frame rate. Uh, and so I'm very happy. We're back on schedule. The normal time. Yes. I'm going to ruin that next week, though, by the way. Oh, that's fine. I, I do it enough time. I and I know this is derivative. I know that I am not the first to do this, that I'm just, I'm a sad imitation of you, but I'm going to Orlando, and so I have to change the time of frame rate. Oh, no, that's fine. Look, it, that's our rule, is that's why we always change schedules, is because it's like South Florida is the Bermuda Triangle of our career. Actually, I think that is where the Bermuda Triangle it, is. Yeah, it's, it's very close to South Florida, actually. That's true. Uh, yeah, I know. I feel like a pale imitation. It's like, hey, Brian's always going to Florida, and we have to change time. I, I, I'm going to go to Florida and change the time and frame rate. I'm going to be gonna, just like Brian. On vacation, or are you doing... No, you actually, some... I'm going out there for a speaking engagement. Oh, so you, you've got a gig. You're I do. Be... I have a gig. Wow, this is like a Brian thing. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, it's not a, yeah, it's like, you know, somewhere cool like Disneyland or anything like that. But, you know, hey, but it's, it's, I might be able to get you in. It's you a radium. So. You know, you got an extra day, might be able to hook you they up. Make, they make rockets. I'm just saying. They're kind of cool. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get to the big story. This just in, the big story. Ah, uh, piracy has ruined everything once again. Uh, Wait. The, 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 the details are in, Brian. We have Wait. the receipts for theater, the, the beleaguered movie industry no. uh, for, for 2010. Are, are you sure that that's... Yeah, so yeah it's, it's bad news. It's, uh, it's not looking good. Uh, oh. with, with rampant piracy, with movies hitting, hitting the BitTorrent uh, before the movie ever hits the theater, what do you, what do you expect we're going to see? I, I don't think I don't think that's what the story the big story is. I, well, th I think that's what one thinks the big story let's is. Let's look at the numbers, Brian. Okay, Mister Mister Pollyanna, uh, Mister denying that that the movie industry is 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 in its death throes. Here are the numbers: 
Uh, in 2010, theaters around the world reported a combined total revenue of $31.8 billion, up 8% from 2009. But, you can't, the numbers don't lie, Brian. It, the bars are going up. That means good, right? Um, bars money. Well, more bars in more places. Sure. From 2006 to 2007, it went up from $25.5 billion to twenty-six point three, and then... 2008 to 27.7 and 2009 to 29.4 and 2010 to 31.8. So, so sure, sure, Brian, you could say, you could spin the numbers to say there have been five straight years of constant revenue growth. <laughs> but, but Tom, there have been five straight years of constant revenue growth. Oh, it's, it's spin factor room. <laughs> let's just, let's just make the numbers say whatever we want. No, that's what the numbers say. They're, they're, it's a trend clearly going up. Hollywood is making more money than ever before. The picture couldn't be rosier for Hollywood studios. And despite rampant piracy, they're rolling in the dough. Well, then how do you explain this quote from Bob Pisano, current Motion Picture Association of America interim president? The continued theft of movies online will have a sustained adverse impact on movie attendance in the coming years. I, I would say, I think the phrase that the uh, that the the Indians used were um, ill-informed and BS is uh, is is what that quote is. Actually, the the one thing he said he does he's very he, speaking of spin he uses where he picked his words very carefully. He said impact on movie attendance and movie attendance has been impacted whether it's by piracy or our wealth of home entertainment choices. People buying tickets did decline, but prices rose on average thirty nine cents per ticket in the United States. So overall, they made more money. Which, well, and that is as it should be, because while we grumble about 3D in the home, uh, I do think 3D in the movie theater is an important development in that the movie theater experience needs to be substantially different from the home viewing experience. And it needs to be something that motivates you to get out of the house and go there and pay a premium for that experience. And so I'm okay with there being a large, I mean, this, this, is, this is good. This is what... This is the future of movies. This is where movies need to go. There needs to be something special because we all have badass home theaters now. So it's like if you just want to see the movie by yourself, then you could get a very high quality experience at home. Somehow, some, somehow, some way, the movie theater industry is doing the right things because generally when something becomes in less demand, you don't raise the prices and make more revenue. Yes, that's kind exactly. of that's kind of unusual. And what it means when that works is that you're providing something that is more valuable. And a lot of people point to 3D or the rise of of more comfortable movie theaters and family oriented things and and better concessions and and sort of improving the movie theater experience in a lot of ways. Uh, but unlike the home movie industry, which is busy trying to figure out how to keep you from watching the movie you bought, the movie right. theater industry is saying, well, if we want people to give us more money we need to make it so that it's worth it to give us more money and and i'm you know uh before i became a a straight shooter and always flew right and did the right thing there was a time that i would watch a lot of bootlegs of movies that were still in the movie theater uh but i qu quickly figured out that my experience when i would describe to people like oh the movie was totally lame and they're like yeah but that scene with the awesome explosion and all this stuff that man it was amazing but then i realized that that you really do get a vastly inferior experience when you pirate movies, especially ones that are still in the theater, compared to when you go to the movie theater and get the full treatment, especially, you know, whether it's 3D, whether it's the premium experience like the Alamo Draft House, where they hand curate clips to play before the movie, have special promotions, you're drinking beer and you're eating awesome food. I mean, it really matters and it's really worth spending the money to get the full theater experience. And so I don't mind there being a premium. I don't mind paying the premium. And I'm glad that the numbers are bearing out that people are moving in the right direction. Now, this next thing I'm going to bring up may be a little spinish, uh, but I, I tend to think it's a good point. The MPAA also pointing out that a movie ticket is still one of the cheapest things you can do for a family of four. So you go to the theater, a family of four, it's going to cost you less than $50. Let's say eh, some ticket prices are above 10 bucks, especially 3D movies. But uh, on the whole, it's, it's less than 10 bucks per ticket. Uh, a lot of times kids get a discount. And then you buy some popcorn, you buy some hot dogs. That's way overpriced, but it's still going to come in under 50 bucks. Go to a Major League Baseball game, it's going to cost you over $100. Uh, wow. Go to a Six Flags type place, it's going to cost you close to 150 M NBA, NHL, NFL, that's all like 200 to 300 dollars. 
Or if you're talking about the big theme parks like your Disney World's, you're talking close to $300. Now, you're not going to go to Disney World every weekend like you would for a movie, so it makes sense that a movie would cost less. But a sporting event shouldn't cost that much more than a movie. Uh, and it does, and people and people pack the stadiums. Yeah, I don't know. And, and it's kind of not the same thing in that you uh, a live experience is fundamentally different from a, an orchestrated movie experience. But, uh, but as far as being a value, I'm not going to disagree with the MPAA. I mean, yeah. On balance, going and seeing a movie with the kids is a great way to, to go out and do something and not, not lose your wallet. Yeah, and, it's, and, and, and it should be cheaper. Let's be clear. I mean, I, I, don't think, I don't think we should take this to mean like destination theme parks are, you know, so much more expensive. That's, you know, mo movies should be more expensive. We should be able to charge more. No, a movie theater is different. It, it lasts lo less time than a sporting event. It's not a big live event, like you say. Uh, it, it is on a smaller scale, and so it makes sense that it would, it would cost less. But I think what they're trying to do is make movie going a more of an event-oriented type of situation. That's why you see more IMAX theaters or LIMAX theaters, as I like to call them, where they just change the aspect ratio of a normal theater. Uh, uh, and, and, and you see 3D movies, and you see events where they have, like, mystery, uh, not Mystery Science Theater, but Rift Tracks, you know, with, right. a, with a live host. And you, and you see things like the Alamo Draft House where they're, they're doing special presentations because you're trying to say, hey, let's make this into an event that's worth paying a little more money for it. It looks to me like the theaters are doing the right things. Yeah, and, and you know what? And here, here's, the, here's the two sides of the coin, though. Uh, congratulations to you, movie industry. You seem to understand that you need to provide a novel experience for people to continue to get out and give you more money and pay more for these tickets. And I'm happy for you for making money, but you don't get to cry, boo-hoo, boo-hoo, we're being hurt when you're making money hand, hand over fist. And I'm, I'm, I'm just saying you can't have it both ways. That's all I'm trying to say. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess the, uh, the argument here is we look at how much money we're making with declining attendance. If it weren't for piracy, we'd have rising attendance. And I don't think that is clear. I don't think it is clear at all that piracy causes declining attendance. And, he, you know, I, I think what's causing declining attendance is the fact that we have more choices for things to do. Our lives are busier and we can we can play video games. We can, you know, hang out and chat with people on Facebook. We have lots of things we can do instead of go to the movies. Movie theaters reign supreme in the days when you had movie theaters or radio. Or even before right. radio, you had movie theaters, you know, and that was that was movie theaters or vaudeville. So, you know, I mean, the, the, the things that you can choose to do and spend your money on have increased um, in large, large numbers. Absolutely. Absolutely. So congratulations and shut up. That's what you say <laughs> to the MPAA. All right. Let's uh, move on to another big story. Stop everything. It's another big story. So we, uh, I believe we've talked about Amazon's uh, announcement, right? Amazon uh, is now allowing streaming live movies over, yeah, uh, oh, if you are an Amazon Prime member, Amazon Prime means you pay for shipping ahead of time, right. like $79 a year. Uh, and right. now Amazon Prime members, can, they're sort of beta testing this live streaming Netflix-like service. Well, Netflix has got an answer to that. Woo! We just signed a two-year non-exclusive licensing agreement with CBS. Dude, this is great. This is, man, this is, this is the Oklahoma land grab. This is Hulu and Netflix and Amazon jockeying to become the new next big three networks. I mean, I, I'm, I'm hoping that everyone, everything keeps rocking and that consumers win. But, I mean, this is, this is great news as far as I'm concerned because I love Love, love, love my Netflix instant mute uh, download experience. CBS partnership means the content from all four major broadcast networks is now available on Netflix. That outdoes Hulu, who only have three major broadcast networks here in the U.S. Uh, Hulu has ABC, NBC, and Fox, and Netflix now adds CBS to that. What it doesn't mean is that Netflix is getting a bunch of day-after-they-air Hulu-type abilities uh and cbs is not giving them any of that stuff they're giving them catalog shows and that's what i want i want complete archives so i could go through and experience an entire season at a time i don't want piecemeal oh you missed this two weeks ago types of things yeah so you'll get star trek you'll get hawaii 5 you'll get macgyver uh but you'll also get more current things like medium you just won't get the current season of medium you'll get last year's season of medium that's fine. As long as it's a complete archive, I'm happy. 
Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's you know, it's another piece in the puzzle. And here's the thing. Here's the thing that struck me about this. Um, Netflix has been under attack a little bit, mostly from Time Warner, making making statements about how they need to be stopped and they need to pay value and blah, 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 blah. Nothing is really stopping Netflix. I believe Netflix and Reed Hastings actually know exactly what they're doing and have a plan and are following it and are paying what needs to be paid and are making good partnerships with these broadcast industries that will help them, but also help Netflix become the big network, essentially. So you're saying they're Cylons. They have a plan and they're following it. There are multiple copies like the one in Canada. But they, look, they look just like each other. Netflix is everywhere. Now that I think about it, it makes perfect sense. They look just like us, and they have a plan. Uh, yeah, so there you go. I, I guess this is a big story, but uh, it's, it's a big story because it's a big network getting signed. Yeah? It's, a, it's another big piece of the puzzle. But you know what? It's going exactly as we have foreseen it. You know what is yet another big story? What? Tuck in your bootstraps. It's yet another big story. Nah, bootstraps are tucked in. Uh, and ready to take a look at this in Gadget reporting the Clicker.com. Did you know Clicker? No, not at all. Tell Clicker me about it. Clicker is a, a well, uh, well undervalued source of finding what's available online. So you go to Clicker, and it's like the TV guide for internet video. It tells you, you, you put in like 10 speed and brown shoe, and it will tell you, tough luck, Merit, not available streaming anywhere. But you put in something more sensible and it will say, oh, well, you can buy it on iTunes and it's streaming on Netflix or, you know, all of the different ways you can consume those TV shows. And they have just done an analysis of Amazon Prime's instant video offerings versus the competition, uh, both on price and the kind of content that's available. And uh, the results are? Uh, it's, it's interesting. It's pretty competitive. It, it, it's basically Here, very it's, it's, low it's, it's, on the amount of content at this point. That's its big disadvantage. Right. So uh, subscription services, uh, number of shows, got Amazon Prime with 500. Netflix has 750. Hulu Plus has 450. And then you have all the, uh, we'll, just, we'll just look at those for the streaming. Um, number of TV episodes, Amazon Prime at 4,000. Netflix at 23,500. Hulu Plus at 16,000. Number of movies, um, uh, Amazon Prime has 1,700, Netflix has 8,250, no surprise there, and Hulu Plus has 775. Uh, no ads on Amazon Prime or Netflix, yes ads on Hulu Plus. Uh, I'll tell you, looking at this breakdown, I'll tell you what I'm struck by is n two things. Number one, Amazon Prime is a bigger player than I would have guessed before looking at this, but number two, how far ahead of the game Netflix is. Yeah. Netflix is just dominating on these for the for the number of shows that are available, the completeness of the archives, uh, you know, when they're available. I mean, this is awesome. Oh, and of course, and even the the quality of the streaming. Yeah, they're today. the only ones in 1080p. Yeah. Uh, the, now the winner for selection, though, in, interestingly, is Amazon Instant Video Pay Per View, which they've been doing for a long time. The one where you buy something and download it and watch it. The uh, thing about that is it doesn't work on anything mobile except the Android browser. It only works on uh, local computers like your PC or your Mac. But they are the total winners of, of amount of content with 62,000 TV episodes and wow. 32,000 movies. iTunes has more TV episodes. They have the most TV episodes at 69,000, but they only have 12,000 movies. Uh, so combined TV sh number of TV episodes and number of movies, Amazon on demand is the winner by far. If you're just looking for TV shows, look at iTunes, man. iTunes got 69,000 episodes of TV shows. Thing is, pay-per-view on demand is the winner on selection right now. That's where the industry wants to put their money. Well, and I like that, uh, and I'm guessing that Amazon's uh, pay-per-view is cheaper than iTunes pay-per-view. Not always. A lot of times it is. Uh, they're, they're, they're very similar, but they're priced differently. So, Rarely can you find something cheaper on iTunes, but occasionally you can. Most of the times, it's about the same or a little cheaper on Amazon. All right. Well, uh, I, I did have a, what I thought was a positive experience with uh, Amazon's Unbox service. It must have been like four or five years Amazon ago. Amazon Unbox is actually what Amazon On Demand video is called, was, was called back in the day. They right, right. And, and it's yeah. like I loved it because it was so quick and easy, and, and they were all in high def, and I grabbed episodes. That's how I watched all of Prison Break, and then... 
I bought a bunch of episodes and then planned to watch them at my parents' place, and I couldn't. And then I just, you know, flushed 20 bucks down the toilet. I was super pissed. Never came back. It's funny the way DRM will make people snap, you know? Well, and Where it's like, you know, everything will be thing, fine, right? and then I'm like, I hate this. I can't do it anymore. So, so you're paying for all this stuff, except for Hulu has a free version. But you're, you're, for all, most of the stuff, you're paying for it. Uh, and then it doesn't work. Or it doesn't transfer, or you're like, oh, I can't watch it on my iPhone. I didn't ro realize that with Amazon Video. Or with iTunes, it's like, oh, you can't watch it on that screen because that screen right. doesn't have DHCP. It's like, what? I, I, I paid for it. I can't watch it on the monitor that I own? That's ridiculous. Right. Uh, and there is one service uh, out there called Piracy that has absolutely <laughs> everything available uh, without any kind of limitation like that. And you get, that's we are what fans of the was, service. No, that's, that's what they're fighting against, and that's what they don't realize. Well, they realize it, but that's what they don't want to admit. They don't want to internalize it. It's tough. I, you know, I rail against it a lot, but I also understand how much easier it is for me to say, go do this, than to do it. It's like the guy in the, in the airplane when you're going to jump out with a parachute saying, come on, just jump out. You got a parachute on. It's going to be fine. And you're right. sitting there going... I am not jumping out of this plane. I don't care if I have a parachute on. The, 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 in, the movie industry is the guy about to jump out of the plane. So well, I, and, get, I get the fear uh, and the trepidation. I, I guess I rail because I'm like, look, the music industry already jumped out of the plane. Their parachute went off. They're, they're, they're going to land. They might twist an ankle. It looks like they probably will, but it's going to be okay. Well, but, and plus you would think with them having already seen this all happen before with the music industry and see how the, the music industry was forced to dig deeper and find new sources of revenue, uh, which, by the way, what, how is the music industry doing? Are they also making money? And over no, this? actually. They're, they're they, not, you know, I know. The movie theaters are actually making I'll money. I'll pack this metaphor then. <laughs> yeah. But, but they're not, you know, the, the question with the move, music industry is, are, is the revenue declining because people just aren't interested in music or because they haven't aggressively tried to monetize things. What hasn't happened is removing DRM hasn't undermined their entire revenue model. Nobody's yes. pointing well, at that. And in fact, right around the time that they removed DRM uh, is what totally kicked the legs out from any kind of interest in piracy. It's so easy now for me to just go to Amazon and yeah. get the DRM free stuff or, in, or on iTunes. And it hasn't increased piracy because piracy doesn't increase. Piracy is almost like a, a constant. Yeah, and, and nothing you do affects it. You can take away DRM. You can put in DRM. It just sort of happens. Yep. Yeah. I All agree. right. Let's move on to film found. <laughs> it's a very special time of year, Brian. Time it's of of recognition. Uh, uh, oh, you mean you're talking about like like special awards? Yeah, yeah. It's time. It's time to award achievement in a field. Time to yeah. recognize those who are leaders in what they do. And 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 this is just like voted among their own buddies, right? Uh, well, yes, sort of. Although there, I would argue uh, with with this particular achievement. Uh, it's it's verifiable. You could go out and and you could you could verify it. You could quantifiable. I like yeah, this. So, yeah. so what what is the? Give me a hint as to the distinction that we're about to reveal. Well, of course, we're talking about most product placement for any brand on television and film, and, and, or or as they say on the street, biggest sellout award. This is, is that what Brand Channel's award for having. The most products appear in more movies. Actually, I said television shows, but that's wrong. More movies than any other company. Uh, I'm going to bet it's the Xbox. No. It's, uh, it's um, uh, Dapper Dan Pomade. Ooh, uh, lots of placement within one movie. Not a real product. No. <laughs> um. Coca-Cola, that's a classic one. Yeah, you think it might be uh, something like Coca-Cola? No. No. Uh, well, you know what? The chat room is nailing it. Nine out of the last ten have said... They, they, they all read the story already. Okay, well, <laughs> all right. 
Probably. But still, I bet they would have guessed it. (laughs) Apple achieves the most product placement of any brand in the last 10 years, according to Brand Channel. Uh, Movies with Apple brands in 2009 and 2010 included Morning Glory, Somewhere, Repo Man, Hereafter, Machete, Greenberg, Catfish, Dinner for Schmucks, Lottery Ticket, Solitary Man, Go in the Distance, Chat Room, Hot Tub, Time Machine, Please Give, She's Out of My League, Chloe, Killers, Book of Eli, The Spy Next Door, When in Rome, High School, Cats and Dogs 2, Step Up 3D, Gulliver's Travels, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, Night and Day, You Again, Vampires Suck, Drag Me to Hell, Orphan, I Love You Man, Duplicity, Crank 2, High Voltage, Ghost of Girlfriends Past, Imagine That, Sorority Row, Answer Man, Post Grad, I Love You, Beth Cooper, All About Steve, Hurt Locker, New York, I Love You, It's Complicated, Road Trip, Beer Pong, Law Abiding Citizen, Fantastic Mr. Fox, Funny People, and Couples Retreat. Those are those are um, those are the ones. That that was amazing. What's I, did Repo Men come out in the past two years? Uh, what Repo Men? Oh, Repo, repo Men, not Repo Men. Eighties. Repo Men. Men was right. the one recently with the body parts thing. Uh, and now the Fantastic Mr. Fox. I thought that was like a a wink nod to the i to the i uh, to iPod or iPad. I, I don't know. I didn't see it, but I, I guess it was product placement because brand managers looking at this saying like. They asked for it to be placed. This isn't just like accidental appearance. So who gets paid on each of those? I the assume that. Uh, I assume the yeah, yeah, the 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 production company, whoever's producing the show. It's funny because it's such a two-way street. Because on the one hand, on the one hand, um, you could charge. Uh, like I know in video games for a while, they, they, they had to have fake ads everywhere because. Yeah. You couldn't just go using other people's real properties or their IP. Well, that, on yeah, it. that's the weird thing, right? Is like you can get sued theoretically for associating a brand with your product. Like that's why that's why Reese's Pieces was an ET and right. not M and M's because M and M said no, we don't want to. But but now they've got now nowadays it's the reverse. It's like hey M and M's, you want to be in our movie? You better fork over some cash. Runners up for the big award were Nike, Chevrolet, and Ford, which tied for second place, appearing in twenty four percent of top films. Wow. Uh, I, yeah, I'm not surprised. Uh, that is one thing that Apple has been from the very beginning is very, very savvy as far as mass marketing and uh, product placement, that kind of thing. Uh, was- do you, you want to know what won worst product placement in a single film? <laughs> Actually, yeah, I do. Wall Street, Money Never Sleeps. <laughs> what do you mean? They, 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 that movie won worst product placement, but I guess brand uh, manager or brand channel didn't want to name <laughs> Why? It's oh, hilarious. <laughs> uh, best product placement by an Oscar-nominated film? Budweiser in The Fighter. Oh, that makes sense. Of yeah, course. Kind of does, yeah. Of course. So, uh, you know what this reminds me of is, do, do you remember, it must have been almost a decade ago I was reading about it happening, where they were talking about going into syndicated, they were talking about, about a decade ago, when D- DVR started happening, everyone was getting TiVos. They were talking about how, look, there's no way to make c- traditional ads. Now we need to do everything as product placement. And they were talking about digitally going into old syndicated episodes of shows like Friends and replacing soda cans with, with clearly visible, digitally altered Coke labels. Did that ever start happening? Is that you rampant? Know, that's, that's a good question. It's, it reminds me of the practice of changing the music in those shows for re-release where you only got the rights temporarily and then you don't secure the rights for distribution afterwards. And so uh, I think it's married with children that you don't have love and marriage by Frank Sinatra as the theme song. If you watch it online because they didn't get the rights to distribute that song afterwards. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, if it, I'll tell you what. Let me put that out to the chat room. If you guys know whether or not that surfaced or goes crazy, make sure to send it to us at frameratereshow at gmail.com. Uh, also, Battle Los Angeles coming out soon. Its so cinematic exciting. debut is within weeks. Uh, and viral marketing for the film has now just been off the charts uh, with something called Watch Ops, W-A-T-C-H, uh, you can explore websites, games, and files for a chance at prizes from Sony, including a PlayStation 3, unless you're in Europe. Well, that's fine. That's cool. I mean, I guess, you know, I don't know. All of this, all of this side game stuff thing. Um, do, you not, do you go for that stuff? Well, yeah, I, here, it depends on, on whether it's clearly a marketing tactic or whether it actually explores part of the story. I remember one of the greatest movie-watching experiences I had was when Donnie Darko came out. And I went to the website at DonnieDarko.com. I don't even know if they're still running it. But it was so weird and engaging. I was like, well, I'm just going to go see this movie. 
And the movie, if you've watched it, obviously you're left with a lot of questions, a lot of stuff that you don't quite under, understand. But then when you go to the website, you actually go through multiple levels of it and experience more of it until, yeah, I guess Donnie Darko is now a, a, a spam site. Uh, but uh, well, but, look at but that. You, you can uh, access parts of the philosophy of time travel, the book that's referenced in the movie. And as a result, after spending like 40 minutes on the website after the movie, the movie made so much more sense. And I got so much more of a richer experience for it. I, I don't know that that's, you know, if you're trying to win a PS3, I don't know that that's exactly the same kind of experience you're going to get here. Yeah, it's it's become an industry. I, I, it's funny, like Lost was an example of this for me, where some of the stuff they did in the early seasons of Lost I thought was absolutely brilliant because they seeded it very quietly. So there was an Oceanic Airlines site, and there was stuff going on that you didn't know about, and then people started to discover it and then tell each other. It was very, very underground. They did it on purpose that way. And then in later seasons, it became very formulaic, like, okay, here's the extended universe thing we're doing this. And, and it was still fun, and there was still some good content in there, but it wasn't as exciting as having it just kind of bubble up naturally. Yeah. Yeah. The chat room is all saying that uh, DonnieDarkoFilm.com. Oh, there we go. Yeah. It's great because it looks like a, uh, a browser, but then when you click on it, you start uh, falling into this this weird extended universe type thing. Uh, highly recommended if you saw the movie and have questions about it. In theaters this weekend, The Adjustment Bureau, Matt Damon, a politician who discovers a mysterious group of agents conspiring to keep him from the woman he loves. Uh, <laughs> also, Yay! Beastly, a retelling of the Beauty and the Beast tale set in New York City. Uh, Rango, if you like animation, Johnny Depp stars in a comedy about a chameleon who faces an identity crisis when he finds himself in the Wild West. That's some, there's some weird, like, uh... It's kind of a weird week, yeah. Well, I mean, I remember when we were kids and, like, cartoons were not the place for existential qu questions, you know? But nowadays, it's like so much of, of, of uh, kids' animation is clearly targeted towards adults and adult problems. First, first one I really noticed like that was Ants. Essentially a, a Woody Allen movie. Yeah, Sorry, right. Dude. Except animated. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, I, I didn't see any films this week. Did you? I did. I actually saw a couple of movies. Um, as you know, while I was on the road, I went and saw The King's Speech. Uh, I was surprised that The King's Speech took all, the, uh, took all those awards at, at the Oscars. How many Oscars did it win? Uh, well, good question. It won, best, it won Best Actor. It won Best Picture. It won Director. Um, I, I think it took best it picture. home. Five or six. I said that. Best Picture, yeah. Uh, I, I was surprised that it did, though. That This seems like another Shakespeare in Love year, where it's just like, really? Like, years from now, we'll be like, I don't know, it's kind of cute, but really? Yeah, well, this uh, I, I thought it was a great movie. I, I, I definitely did. Uh, and I can't say that I argue with it winning, although I thought The Fighter was better. Um, yeah. You know, more interesting. But yeah, this is, this, they yeah. do this, right? They have a year where there's something like Avatar or Lord of the Rings or something that's, that's really in the running, whether it takes the best picture or not. And you've got a lot of blockbusters. And then you have a year like this where the, none of the blockbusters got nominated. There's sort of the backlash. Uh, and maybe the blockbusters just sucked. Well, and, uh, you know, certainly one of those blockbusters that did get nominated was Inception. I mean, look, 20 years from now, Inception and the social network will be relevant and amazing icons of their time. You think you think the social network will? I agree with you on Inception. I'm not sure the social network will stand the test but of time. For a different reason. For a different reason. To remind us of this time. It will be an iconic movie of this era and Maybe. we will yeah. remember the things that happened at this time. I think the social network won exactly the right award. It won an award for best writing. Aaron Sorkin is very good at writing dialogue and he wrote great dialogue. So the screenplay should have won. It won best screenplay. Right. That's, well, uh, It wasn't a uh, great... It wasn't the greatest movie. Inception, uh, I, I think, was... Inception was yeah. phenomenal. Was I can't it. believe that, that it didn't win uh, Best Picture. It was... That Inception should have won the way uh, Saving Private Ryan should have won, and instead it lost that year to uh, Shakespeare in Love, which is just silly. But Shakespeare was in love. I know. Do you hate love, Brian? <laughs> so, uh, uh, I'll tell you what I did see. And because, uh, because I got infected with the flu by my daughter, all of a sudden that's licensed for me to get caught up on a bunch of movies. I watched uh, Waiting for Superman. Have you seen that? No, I have not seen that. What is, what is this about? Phenomenal. I believe it's from the same guy who did An Inconvenient Truth talking about the problem of schools and school choice and kids and about how many kids' lives depend on a lottery because we have this bizarre system that's 
held in gridlock. And if you've watched The Wire, you know exactly the type of problems that they face, whether it's the no child left behind, whether it's pressure from the teachers' unions. Uh, it's very, very difficult to fire underperforming teachers. It's almost impossible to create a meritocracy where um, uh, one of where one I of, rule. Well, yes, where where Tom Merritt rules, <laughs> and uh, but uh, as a result, um, I have for years been fascinated by this problem, especially now that I have a daughter myself, and we're trying to figure out how to get to uh, get her to the right school to get ahead. But the way he attaches you to this small collection. Of, of I think four or five children, and they all have different problems and different backgrounds, and they all want very badly to to get out of where they are into one of these better schools. One of the theses that you that you learn by the end of the, the movie is that these schools, these uh, these high performing schools, have cracked the code. They've taken kids from poor neighborhoods who have nothing going for them. Some of them are boarding schools. Some of them are are you know you, anyone just drives in. Uh, but but they've cracked the code to make successful children. But because of the established bureaucracy, uh, they we can't bring that same type of success to the rest of the public school system. And it's agonizing. I'm not going to lie. It gets to the end, and you watch these kids, and they all they all just go to a lottery. And I full on, I I was crying watching some other kids, you know, someone else's kids watch their future in the balance and not knowing what's going to happen. It, it's amazing. It's an amazing movie. I really enjoyed it. So when does Superman show up? Uh, you know what? He doesn't. And that's the big twist. You know, these kids should probably be worried about their education and not just waiting for some superhero. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, sorry. You just, uh, yeah, you just spoiled right, the ending I of that hope. movie for a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let us uh, move on to Tube Tops. Oh, wait. Although we have an I, addendum to film film. What were you gonna, I'm yeah. sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, right? Oh, no, that's fine. The only other movie I watched was This Film Is Not Yet Rated, which was about the NBA. <laughs> have you seen that one? Here's what I did. I look at our notes, right? And Brian has wrote, <laughs> written, Waiting for Superman, This Film Is Not Yet Rated. And I'm like, well, that's interesting that Waiting for Superman isn't rated. And I just... just I. Yeah, I had this queued up. That's why I was late on the uh, <laughs> on okay. the clip. <laughs> so this film is not yet rated. Yeah, it's the, a documentary. The documentary. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you saw that as well. Um, yeah, that's and that's available on Netflix Instant Streaming. Uh, let me tell you, man, Netflix Instant Streaming is an awesome rabbit hole of really quirky, cool documentaries. Yeah, I highly it's recommend filled with docs. It's awesome. The, uh, uh, yeah, the worst part like, is I've actually heard of this documentary, and I still didn't. It did sink oh, through my thick skull. Seen it then. Yeah, no, I haven't seen it yet. It's, it's one half really good information about how we have a de facto censorship organization through the MPAA. Uh, I don't think you're allowed to say that. one half spiteful vendetta against the MPAA. Like, the, the guy does stuff. Like, he hires a private investigator to, to find out who the secret members of the ratings board are, and he plasters their names over them. And I'm like, all right, well, this looks like you're personally pissed off at them. But it was still a good movie. It was worth watching. All right. Uh, to start our Tube Tops coverage, uh, YouTube says it is, in fact, in talks to stream NHL and NBA games on YouTube.com. This is one of the holy grails for being able to watch all of your video on the Internet is folks who like sports, which I know there's, there's probably not as many people in our audience as there are in the general populace, but this is one of the big things. People are like, I'm into the NHL. I'm into NBA. I want to watch my team's games, and I, I can't watch them over the air because I've got a crappy signal in my area, so I have to have cable to watch the games. Or not all the games are carried over the air. A lot of times, especially uh, you, you know, in smaller markets, the games are carried on cable anyway. So if you can get your games on uh, YouTube, that would be awesome. NHL says, we are not in talks with YouTube to stream this I stuff. And the, uh, the, just the insult to add to the injury, YouTube says, um, well, we're in talks to stream these in China. Uh, yeah, let me tell you, this, I, I, I would be shocked if this really came to pass, at least in the way that we imagine it, because all of these big sports companies make a mint by tightly locking down how and when and what you can learn about the games as they're going on. Uh, that, to, to just say, ah, put it on YouTube, let anyone watch, just seems awfully out of character for any of them. Well, actually, Major League Baseball is the leader in this space, in my opinion. You can watch every single game streaming live online at MLB.com. Uh, and they have an app for Roku. 
They are they're out there like pushing this. The issue is they also have apps for Android and, and iOS. The issue is you are not allowed to watch streaming versions of the game of your market. So right. if, for instance, you're in Austin, Texas, you can't watch the Astros or the Rangers streaming live because they're in your market. So they right. block that out. It's only out-of-market games. That's why it works, because these are games you wouldn't normally be able to see anyway, and you pay extra for them. So you can do the same thing with NHL and NBA. NBA has an app on uh, Google TV. NHL has an app on Roku. Uh, but I think what people would be really excited about is the idea of watching my everything available, you know, advertising supported on something like YouTube. And we get back to the dream again. All we want is just to watch whatever we want, whenever we want, on whatever device we want, and to not have ads if we can get away with it. Well, is, is that so hard? We're going to have to come up with a broken record sound effect because we are on this show going to constantly return to these refrains of you just need to monetize the eyeballs. We just yeah. need well, to be if, able to jump to that somehow. If uh, uh, I... Because we've we've been talking about how the other alternative, if they don't figure it out, is piracy for some of the MPAA stuff. The, the, the alternative, there's a lot of people who will bootleg this stuff and they'll put it up on Ustream or Justin TV until they get crushed and then somebody else will open a channel and throw it up on there. So there's, there's big problems as far as figuring out how to, um, uh, how to get, you know, again, people what they want when they want it. I am uh, still watching um, Fringe. Uh, and and it's 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 perking along. There's good stuff. I highly recommend it. Anybody who hasn't uh, jumped in on Fringe, do jump in on it. Anybody who's watching it, I I, I think you agree with me. Keep watching it. Uh, it's it's good good stuff. Uh, and I'm not gonna say anything more about it because I don't want to spoil it. Uh, it I, it I, is shocking how many just tweets I get. They're just like Fringe is awesome, Brian. Why are you not watching Fringe? I am no longer watching V. Oh, I haven't entirely given up on it. It's You're still not. on the DVR. Eileen has abandoned it. She's like, watch it without me. I'm not watching V anymore. Uh, I, so I think I'm going to try to still catch up. But, wow, it is just... What was the last straw? What was the last straw? <sighs> there wasn't a last straw. That's the thing. With V, it's been sort of a... You know, I've been really busy because Leo was out for three weeks and I was covering for him. And then we're planning for South by Southwest. And so there's always that, like, oh, yeah, I got to sit down. And what's on the DVR for me to watch? Well, there's right. V... Oh, that there's Top Chef All Stars. Yeah, I think I'll watch that. Or oh, 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 you know, I got The Office. I haven't caught up on The Office yet this week. You know, so there's always something that trumps it. So it's not losing because it's like that's it. Like with the Cape, I was like, you know what, not watching it anymore. And everybody says I should go back and try to catch up. That's even farther down the priority list than V for me. How about you? It's the reverse effect of The Wire, where The Wire starts off feeling like homework, but eventually becomes your favorite thing. Yeah. Where V is like, it starts off, hey, I'm really excited. I'm like, ah, I guess I got to do my V. <laughs> <laughs> and then you sound like you're a character from True Blood. <laughs> hey, so uh, I was at a friend's house, and he uh, had from his brother, his brother had, had lent him uh, the full series of Breaking Bad, and the guy hadn't watched it. I was like, put in this one right now. We're going to watch it right this minute. And I had only planned to watch like the first 20 minutes with him, but, it, but my buddy left the room and then I went on and just watched the whole rest of the first episode. It is so good. It is so good uh, right from the beginning, right from that yeah, very first is. episode. And we've said it before, but I am so excited about uh, the, the show coming back. Uh, I also finally started Boardwalk Empire, which I am enjoying. And you you said you were kind of meh on it, right? Uh, yeah, a little bit better than meh. I think it's very good. I watch an episode of Boardwalk Empire, and I'm like, wow, Steve Buscemi's great. I like this story. I like the way it's created. I love they've captured this time in America that we actually don't see on film or TV hardly ever. And then when it's done, I don't, I don't really want to watch the next one. Like, it's, it's, it's also suffering a little bit of that effect of like, oh, yeah, I got to watch Boardwalk Empire. Like, it's the pace of it. And I think it is suffering from me having to have waited. Like, now that I've got a bunch of them piled up, if I had some time to watch them, I could watch them all in a row. It might be okay. Uh, but it just, everything just moves so slow. It feels like nothing is happening. It's, uh, well, <laughs> that is a, uh, a Scorsese hallmark, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. You know, that's, that's what he's great at is atmosphere and, uh, uh, feeling like you're there, which not, doesn't necessarily mean a lot of plot progression. Right. All right, let's move on to Interfarad.
So these are our viral video, web video uh, segment, and uh, you, we've got what I think may be a masterpiece here. Uh, it really, really is. This one was sent in no less than three times to frameratereshow at gmail.com, each one independently. A lot of people wanted us to start the show off with it, but the problem is that it's six minutes long, so I'm not able to do that. Essentially, somebody has cut together pieces of big blockbuster movies out of context footage from a bunch of Hollywood mainstays and, and created a virtual trailer for a sequel to E.T., where E.T. comes back and his people are trying to tear up all of Earth and that E.T. has to be one of the few people trying to save all, all the people. But uh, but they, they there's footage from Jonas Brothers concerts where all of a sudden they're in the middle of the concert and then the aliens show up and they have these out-of-context reactions that really make it look like... here. And I mean, the, the folks who are watching video right now are seeing it right now. But it's, it's phenomenal. Morgan <laughs> Freeman is obviously in this movie. Yeah, he yeah, should but, be. Um, you also see an adult Drew Barrymore. Yeah, right. Uh, they do. They use cut out. You know, Drew Barrymore shots from other movies, but she should be in the sequel, right? Because Gertie's all yeah, grown up. You have an adult Elliot, and then you have, yeah, as you're seeing right now, you have uh, all of ET's people showing up. They also use footage of that's Bruce close Will encounters what? that they're using right there. Yeah. What was the what was the um, uh, the Bruce Willis movie? The Siege. There we go. So you see the Siege. He comes in and, and declares martial law. To fight the uh, the the ET aliens, it's it's really fantastic. You got to check it out. Absolutely well done and and well edited. There, this could be one of those things that sounds great in concept, and then when you watch it, it's a little bit a uh, little bit cheesy. Operation <laughs> Reese's Pieces, by the way, freaking brilliant. Uh, but but it looks like they've they've done a good job. They've actually done more than just edit together clips. They've done some CG of their own. Oh yeah, to, yes, to, to make some of the stuff work together, like helicopters that say Reese's Pieces stenciled on the side. Yeah, the the very much worth worth checking out. That's uh that's it's uh that's my favorite thing I've seen this week. That's All great. right, before we uh, finish up with email, I want to make a big announcement, Brian. A big announcement? Yeah, we is this, uh now is this I, another another big story. This well, sort of. Um, this is uh we had an Oscar pool here in the in the Twit Cottage. I'm sorry you couldn't take play uh, take part in it, uh, being remote. We'll have to fix that and, next and time. Also not, I, that's the other reason I wasn't able to take part in it is because I wasn't told about it. Well, yeah, I, almost nobody who wasn't actually present at the moment they decided to do it was told about it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, mm -hmm. Next next year, we have to be a little more, if we plan a little more in advance than Thursday, uh, then, then we could we can bring in and do it online and stuff. That, by the way, for a show that's about television, movies, and viral videos, could we be more flippant about, about the Oscars? Could well, we get <laughs> You know, I mean, we're about technology and viral videos and I mean, that's, movies that's, and TV. So, you I, know. I think I have a deep contempt for the Oscars, though. They're so yeah. self See, I, I, Oscars are the one award show I watch every year. Even before I married Eileen Rivera, who's a big fan of award shows, uh, I always watched the Oscars because I felt like it was the one thing that was important whether I agreed or not. That it, right. was, it was sort of the standard that was going to be important to know about and to see what happened. But, so I, I enjoy watching it. it, it it's sort of a tradition for me. Um, but there is a part of me that's always a little bit, not dismissive, but sort of combative to what they choose. Well, and here's, here's the difference is I feel like there's no, it's not the people talking with the Oscars at all. And, and even award shows where the people vote. Those like are People's both Choice people Awards? You could buy, yeah, you could buy favor and all those, but it's like, I'm really interested in the, the box office receipts, you know? So it's like, that's why I get so excited for our, our, our summer draft fantasy movie. Yeah, league. yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I want to be it's, a part of that. But, you know, uh, Oscars is like flip of a coin, you know, it's like, you know, it's, it's funny how so many of the decisions have nothing to do with the quality of the movie. Yeah, I'll make you a deal. If you, if you uh, don't forget to include me in the summer Oscar uh <laughs> Or summer movie uh, comp competition. I will make sure not to forget to include you in the Oscar pool next time. Done it, done. From right. now on. Uh, anyway, we had our Oscar pool here in the cottage. Uh, Thirty dollars was at stake. That means ooh, ten ooh. people participated at three dollars a pop. This is big. And we like have. To, I'd like to spoiler alert. I'd like to congratulate our winner. Spoiler alert. Is it a spoiler? Is it a Look, spoiler? Yeah. About to announce it. Well. Uh, Maybe a spoiler. Is that a spoiler? When you just announced I don't know. We, we don't have a congratulations <laughs> alert. If you don't want to know who won, <laughs> don't listen. I almost played us is out it, with the tech news today. Is it a spoiler alert when they announce who won the election? 
Yes. Yes. If you don't want to know who won. On the lottery, when they announced the lottery winner? Spoiler (laughs) alert. If you wanted to wait until Inauguration Day, you just turn off the news now. Because we're going to spoil it now. Barack Hussein Obama will be your next president. All right. Here is the winner of our Oscar pool. Congratulations, Mr. Jeff Stewart. Yay. Our editor... One of our editors uh, sits up there with Tony and Jason in the editing cupola mm-hmm. here at the cottage. Uh, and he won by a nose. There were three of us, myself included, tied for second place. I believe we got 15 right, and he got 16 right. Wow. Change. And uh, we and Lin Fu, who tallied it all up, said that uh, he won on foreign film, which uh, we all wow. picked beautiful, and uh, he picked the Danish film that won. Well, there it is. Should have known better. So congratulations, Jeff Stewart. Uh, we wish he could be here right now, but he's upstairs editing. <laughs> now get back TNT, to work. TNT, actually. We, he, we, he was all big talk about having an acceptance speech and everything, and then I don't see him. Yeah. Well, I don't that's, know that's totally Jeff, by the way. But we'd just play him off if he yeah. did anyway. All right, uh, let's go to the emails, Mr. Brush. Now it's time for feedback and with Brian and Tom on Flame Radio. Yeah. Kuhan in the middle of that. That comes from Kuhan. Uh, it sounded like there was some kind of artifacting in the middle. Maybe we'll get a better quality of it next time. But well done, Kuhan. Thank you for that. Yeah, uh, email us, Kuhan. And, uh, I, uh, we'll I grabbed one email. If you want to grab another one, Tom, uh, please take a look here. Sure, this sure. one says, hi, guys. I'm currently watching the latest episode. You guys are talking about the Star Wars documentary, and we're both surprised about the original opening not having the episode four in the text. I'll do you one better. The movie studio was so sure that some theaters wouldn't want to show Star Wars that they forced a package deal on the theaters. Hmm. The studio said that with the distribution of the movie, the other side of midnight, the theater would also have to show Star Wars. I believe this was in the big official documentary on one of the DVDs on the silver box set of episodes four through six. Crazy, huh? It, you know, it was also on the uh, the extras for the silver box set of The Other Side of Midnight, which obviously huge. Contractually, they had to put the extra in both of them at the same time. <laughs> Turn about fair play, suckers. You know, I saw Star Wars for the first time in Springfield, Illinois, at a, a drive-in theater as a double feature with whatever the Grizzly Adams movie was that was out then. Wait, now, th- that that had the same guy playing Grizzly Adams as a TV show, right? Yeah. It was like the movie of the TV show. Right, exactly. And, it was, and, and Grizzly Adams was the, like, was the top bill. It's yeah, like wow. Star Wars and Grizzly Adams' new movie. That's awesome. We're not going to lose money on Star Wars, so that's funny that I had no idea that they forced a package deal on theaters. That's hilarious. All right, uh, this one says, well, I took your challenge, watched a random Netflix instant movie all the way through. It was Exam, an independent film in the vein of Cube, only without as much gore and with a much lighter story. Exam was one of those films where I couldn't ever really no. decide if it was good or bad. Overall, I was mildly entertained, though if you like crazy, it's all one of puzzle movies you know. This is my favorite segment, by the way. So there you go. Thank Thanks, you Nathan, uh, for writing in and telling us about Exam. Uh, man, I guess that's it for this episode, huh? You got anything else you're excited about for this next week? I am going to Orlando. Very excited. And oh, then South by said that I'll be seeing you in Austin. See, welcome to my world, right? Yeah. I got so much going on, it's hard to make time for anything. But uh, thankfully, since I'm sick, I'll get to watch a whole bunch of other movies as well. Yeah, I did. Yeah, movie wise, no, there's really nothing like grabbing me. I wouldn't mind seeing that um, uh, yeah, Matt want- Damon movie about the. Seek, you know, the paranoid agents who are trying to keep him from the woman he loves. But I could see, uh, I could I'll see that. Watch anytime. that. I think both oh. of us missed What's that. Up? I was super excited about when we were talking about it, but somehow it came and left, and I never saw it. We've got to see Monster, the one that takes the the, the, the sci fi movie that's made for like five hundred thousand dollars. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm in. Definitely. Yeah. Maybe we'll we could watch Monster. it in Austin. Yeah, you know what? Maybe we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that in person. Yeah, here. That'd be Am cool. I- That'd be awesome. Right. That would be monster. It'd be monstrously awesome. Uh, sir. The other thing I wanted—I I almost forgot to mention on Film Film, uh, I did have on television *Prince of Persia: Sands of Time*, the movie. On, uh, did you remember that movie? It's yes, got yes, Jake Gyllenhaal in it, yep. uh, and money in the summer movie league. I was—I uh, was watching. I was like, oh, I'll turn that on. I had it on, I was sitting on the couch. This is while Eileen was gone to Madrid, so it's just me and the dogs in the house, nothing to distract me. Kind of forgot it was on. 
Really? Yeah. It didn't didn't suck you in. I was hey, I was on my know, iPad and there's like, oh right, the TV's still on. Oh, uh, I'm uh, Prince of should, should we take just a moment to thank the people who make this episode of Frame Rate possible, Tom? Yes, we should actually. Uh, before we get out of here, very very important to uh, allow people to know that they can get maximum no spam. Maximum no spam. That is correct. And minimum, uh, well, I, or as I like to call you it, you don't minimum. want minimum yeah. no spam. You want maximum no spam, and the only way to get it is from MailRoute at MailRoute.info. Yes, that's that's correct. Are you waiting for me to play it? Is that what this is? Maybe. <laughs> All right, here we Justin go. Justin Robinson, Drunk Brennan, FW. <laughs> Do you want maximum no spam? Are you tired of having minimum no spam? Welcome to MailRoute.info. You're going to get maximum no spam. Quit being a sissy. <laughs> we want maximum no spam for you at MailRoute.info. You don't want it all up in your face yelling at you like some sort of deranged homeless person. No, mailroute.info. You can edit your MX record, then you are taking it to the max. You're going to get maximum no spam. Mailroute.info. Thomas, where's my fan, please? Like, Stop emailing me, mother. Mailroute.info. Try maximum no spam exercises like the quiet inbox. <laughs> MailRoute.info. Quit being a sissy. MailRoute.info. It sticks a stick of dynamite in Spam's mouth and throws it off a bridge and watches it explode. <laughs> Trademark. My favorite part of that is the, is the sticks a stick of dynamite in Spam's mouth and throws it off a bridge. The Golden Gate Bridge, as a matter of fact. All right, that's it. Uh, you can email us, frameratesshow at gmail.com. You can find us at twit.tv slash fr. Uh, we'll be recording if you watch live on Monday next week uh, yes. at 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern. We'll see you then.